Hi everybody, welcome to the Keeping It Real Reality Check Show. I'm your host, Keeping It Real, and this is my reality check for you today. Check it out. Uh, there's a few things that are uh, really big going on in the world today that I think all of us should really be focusing on. Um, uh, number one, of course, is the Ebola virus. Um, um, the epidemic that is uh, currently going on in uh, uh, Sierra Leone in Africa. Um, it's uh, uh, expanding at an uh, unprecedented rate, and the death rates just keep climbing and climbing and climbing. Currently, um, I think there's been about 13,000 exposures to the Ebola virus, and about 932 deaths um, as of today. Um, this is just since uh, last March. It's currently August. So, um, uh, one of the things about this is that uh, that I, I worry about is that, uh, well, there's a few things. Uh, the Ebola virus, of course, is, is growing at an unprecedented rate. It's spreading faster um, than any uh, outbreak ever before. Um, and it's killing people, you know, left and right. Uh, the incubation period for the Ebola virus is anywhere between, like, four days to two weeks. And uh, it's not contagious until you start showing symptoms of the virus, which once again can take anywhere between like four days to two weeks. So if you're exposed to the Ebola virus, um, which the media is telling you through, it's, it's through contact with bodily fluids, um, you know, blood, urine, sweat, and uh, coughing and sneezing are considered uh, body fluids. As a matter of fact, those are aerosolized body fluids, uh, especially sneezing when you sneeze it into the air, it floats around and just around for a little bit. So um, it's not just by physical contact that you can contract the, the Ebola virus, which is a, uh, a pretty wicked uh, di uh, disease, guys, or virus. Um, it basically liquefies your insides. So you could be pretty much fine and walking around, you know, after you've been exposed, shaking hands with everybody, you start showing symptoms like coughing, uh, uh, a fever, that's when you're actually gonna start spreading it to people, you know, it's, it's, it kind of probably feels like a cold or the flu or something. So you're not feeling very well, and at that moment, everybody you come in contact with is are people you're exposing to this highly deadly virus. Um, and it's not until the final few hours or days of of the virus that your health seriously starts to deteriorate and that's when your internal organs start to liquefy um, and then you of course bleed out you know from the ears the eyes the nose because um, your intestines your pancreas and all these internal organs are starting to well become liquid and that's how you die from the Ebola virus and like I said uh, earlier is that uh, well this Ebola virus is uh, accelerating at an unprecedented level, I meaning never in the history, of recorded history, um, has it spread so far, so fast, and killed so many in such a short time. Um, it seemed like the, the numbers of deaths seemed to be increasing uh, about a hundred, you know, uh, a week now, when it was, you know, just a couple, you know, and a, you know you know, a couple of deaths initially, and then uh, they went to uh, you know, a few deaths uh, every couple of weeks. And then it accelerated into, you know, 10, 20 deaths a week. And now we're, you know, currently up to 100 and something a week that are, are dying from uh, the Ebola virus that's not exposed. So it's, it's accelerating at an unprecedented rate, which has me even more confused because. Well, for some reason, the American government has decided to bring the Ebola virus to America. Let me explain that to you. Two doctors that were working on these villages, and people in uh, Sierra uh, Leone, in Africa, um, were exposed. Now, they were Americans, and so someone got it up their butt to bring these people, uh, these two doctors, to America, uh, Atlanta, Georgia to be specific, to hospitals to care for them and to test uh, an pos a possible cure for the Ebola virus. Okay, it sounds good. I mean, I mean, they're Americans, they're doctors, they've been working their lives trying to treat and uh, cure uh, Ebola. Um, 
but at the same time, anybody and everybody that they have come in contact with, within you know, uh, sneezing distance, we'll call it, um, could possibly have been uh, uh, have contracted the Ebola virus, and and it takes two to you know uh, four days to two weeks to actually start seeing symptoms about it. So this transfer of two Americans from you know the Ebola outbreak region of uh, Africa to Atlanta, Georgia, um, greatly, if you ask me, increases the chance of the outbreak actually coming to America. Now, there's just starting to be in the news, you know, people starting to panic, you know, they get a fever, they get a cough, let's go to the hospital, and the doctors check them for Ebola virus. It's starting to be a panic being generated here in America, um, which, you know, I don't blame them because, you know, there's, you know, the head of the CDC, you know, has said that this, the outbreak is you know, out of control. <clears throat> and so we bring it to America. And that just makes absolutely no sense to me. So th this transition, you know, from, you know, of bringing these people from Africa to uh, Atlanta, Georgia, a highly densely populated area in, in America, um, just, we won't know if people have been affected, you know, for four to four days to two weeks. And so this exposure can just continue and continue and continue until, you know, we have a pandemic, you know, which is a, you know, a viral outbreak uh, on a global scale. So, um, and it, we're not just worried about the two doctors that are coming to America, you know, because of airlines and, you know, and, and travel and it, it being a small world nowadays. Um, anybody that's gone to the uh, African region, you know, um, you know, going to London or coming to America, you know, um, anybody, any one of those people could be exposed and we don't know it. And we won't know for anywhere from four days up to uh, two weeks. So, uh, I don't know, this, this outbreak makes me really uncomfortable, really nervous as far as what could happen, considering, um, you know, in my, some of my former videos, and you can Google this online, um, that the United States government had prepared itself for such a, a pandemic. Um, millions of plastic coffins have been spotted staged throughout America. Uh, mass graves have been dug and, and prepared, you know, to bury, you know, four to six people per tomb <coughs> in, uh, you know, in, in national cemeteries all across America, you know, the ability to bury, bury you know, hundreds of thousands, if not, you know, millions of people in mass graves, you know, you know, high-tech, you know, 2000, 21st century mass graves, you know, they don't just pile the bodies, they throw them in these concrete tombs, you know, about, you know, four to six people deep, throw concrete, cover them, and then you just set them, you know, right next to each other, you know, filling entire fields, you know, with bodies in these mass graves. So it's just kind of a high-tech mass grave thing, but they, yeah, they, yeah, the United States government um, has, you know, these sites prepared all throughout the country, and they have for quite some time, at least 10 years. And they seem to be preparing that, you know, um, constantly throughout the, you know, as each day passes. And one another great concern to me too is that the Department of Homeland Security has uh, obviously been preparing, preparing for either civil unrest, a natural emergency on a grand scale, you know, or maybe even a biological outbreak by arming the Department of Homeland Security to the teeth. Um, as a matter of fact, every branch of the federal government, right down to, um, you know, parks and nature, you know, DNR and <clears throat> Social Security agents and stuff like that, are now being armed with, you know, hollow bullets, you know. You know, they, what the Department of Homeland Security has bought close to three billion rounds of ammunition. Three billion rounds of ammunition for what? You know, so you throw in the, you know, the ammunition, you know, the, 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 the vamping up of the, the Department of Homeland Security to be a, a national police force that is well equipped and to, uh, well, to overtake America or, you know, subdue it, you know, or you know, I don't know what's going on, but the Ebola outbreak is a, is a, is a grave concern to me and as it should be to all of us. I mean, and, and the Ebola virus is not the only thing we really need to worry about. I mean, you got, well, the, you know, Israel and ISIS, you know, now being called IS, which is basically a global jihad. 
uh, that is going on right now. It started with the Arab Spring back in 2011, you know, uh, you know 21 uh, Arab countries, you know, overthrew their governments and implemented, you know, uh, you know uh, Sierra law and uh, uh, a, a jihad uh, in 21 countries. And we kind of like the media just kind of blew it off. But because they blew it off, now uh, Iraq has basically fallen to these extreme radicals that are directly connected uh, to Al Qaeda and uh, all its other branches, you know, like the Al Nusra and, and, and Hamas and all these other groups and organizations. Now that they've actually, is, is the Islamic State <coughs> has basically taken over Iraq and Syria and uh, and all the other. 21 countries and are rising up right now with the goal of a global jihad and recent news stories uh, and video posted by them is their claim is to basically fly an Islamic flag over the U.S. I mean, so basically you're talking a, a global Sharia law coming to not only all the world but America and with Obama in, in the White House you know arming and financing them you know publicly in the media that also is a, is a huge concern uh, to me, as it should be to all of us. Um, uh, the world is in a, a state of upheaval now that I think um, well, it hasn't been seen in, 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 well, ever. And I think that's something that we should all seriously be, be uh, paying attention to and uh, preparing for. You know, um, I think if you can own a gun, you should go out and buy a gun. And if you buy a gun, you should train with that gun, learn how to use it. And if you have, you know, children that are 13 years or older, I think you might want to, you know, uh, familiarize them with guns and the use of them, the safety of guns. And that way you can um, better uh, defend yourself uh, against whatever situation it might be, whether it's uh, some burglar coming in your door, uh, Islamic radicals freaking out at the supermarket and killing a bunch of people, or uh, a hostile takeover uh, of America, you know, from within. So uh, I think that uh, that is something that we should all definitely be doing. We should be arming ourselves and uh, knowing how to defend ourselves, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, and familiarize yourself with weapons and, of course, stockpiling food and necessities and the knowledge to get you through times that I think are no doubt coming. It's just a matter of time. And so uh, that's basically it. This is a short summary of uh, things that I think are, are really uh, distressing to me and they should be to you. Um, I understand that uh, the news is depressing and, and, and you really don't want to watch it, but I think you should. And uh, not only watch Fox News, MSNBC, uh, MSNBC or CNN, all these other ones, but also go online and do your own research. And I think that's probably even more important than listening to the news. The news will tell you what they want you to hear and you take those stories and then you find out more about those stories and uh, by doing your own research and going through uh, independent investigators, you know, um, and uh, alternative news sites, uh, and then come and form your own opinion about what's going on in the world. Because I'm telling you folks, uh, the world is in a, a, a state of upheaval that I think, well, I know that I haven't seen in my times. And being a history nut, I don't think I've ever read about a, a, an upheaval on a global scale that we're about to undergo. And what's kind of concerning to me is, you know, we got this Ebola outbreak and we got, you know, you know, ISIS or IS or Al Qaeda, whatever you want to call them, global jihadists that uh, want to impose a global caliphate on, on the whole world, um, uh, ramping up right now on a huge scale. And uh, I think that's something we definitely all need to be prepared about. Winter is coming and if something like that were to strike in the middle of winter, I think we have a huge problem and an insanely large death rate if you're not prepared uh, with knowledge and guns and weapons and food. So I guess that's my uh, calling out my reality check for you today is, to, uh, well, uh, pay attention to the news guys and, and do your own research because the Ebola outbreak is not a joke. You know, this ISIS, this global caliphate is not a joke. It's going on and this, they are very serious about it. So uh, that's it, guys. Uh, this is my reality check. It's August 6, 2014. Uh, just pay attention because I intend to make a lot more of these videos as time goes by. So uh, that's it, folks. Peace out. This is Keeping It Real, as always.
ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ